Okay, now you guys should have all of your tools touched off in the mill, and so the next step for setting up the machine is actually finding the origin of the part and telling the machine where the origin of the part is. Now you should be familiar with this tool in the spindle right now. It's the edge finder. You guys should remember it from the manual side. It has the tip that kind of wobbles around off center. Now we're going to use this in the exact same way as you may remember. We're going to go ahead and we're going to touch it off on one side and then on one edge to find our origin. Now in our case, for most of our projects, our origin is coming from the top left corner. And so we're going to actually position this edge finder down at the top left corner of my part. So the first thing I have to do is I actually have to start up the edge finder. Now in the mill, <clears throat> in MDI mode, you're actually going to program in a spindle speed of about 1500 and then turn the spindle on. So in MDI right now I just have S1300 MDI, so right there. And then I go to hit cycle start and the one thing it's going to tell me is that the door is open, I need to close the door and press cycle start. So I'm going to go ahead and close the door over here, both sides in this case. And then if I go back and I hit cycle start, it's going to open. Now it's running right now. The problem with that is it's hard to see exactly what's going on through the glass. So as long as you start the spindle with the doors closed and you have the machine in setup mode, you can actually open the door. It's going to slow down, but it'll stay spinning so you can really get in there and check it out. Now all I'm going to do is to use my handle jog to get close to the actual part. So I go and I hit handle jog X. I want to bring my X axis kind of over until it's near the left side. I bring my Y so that it's kind of over here. And then I bring Z down. Now I'm going to touch off on my left side first. So I bring it down, I get sort of close. And then I'm going to start slowing down my feed rate so that it takes me longer to get down and I don't jam into the part. So the first thing I want to do is get close. Now I'm going to actually bring it over to the left side, all the way over. And then I'm going to lower down the edge finder until just the tip is going to be protruding onto the edge. So once I'm there, I can actually start to move on my x-axis one thousandth of an inch at a time. I'm going to zoom in right over here until what we're looking for, if you remember, is for the edge finder to offset. And so now I'm on X, I move over slowly, one click, one thousandth at a time. I start to actually see that edge finder smooth out. And then I keep going until it just starts to offset. And if you remember, it's going to offset kind of towards the side. And if we look off on the side, it's actually offset a little bit. Now at that point, you have it set on the side and you can leave it right there, even on, and you wanna come over to your control. So once we're on our control, I'll zoom back out so you can see the whole thing. Once we're on our control, what we wanna do is we wanna set our work offset. And so the way we do that is we go into our offset menu down here. So if I just click offset, it's gonna bring me into my two menus up here. Now on the older mills, you're gonna to have to click once or twice depending where you want to be. Now before you were in the tool length offset, but you actually want to be in the work zero offset. Now we're going to work inside G54. So I'm going to come down here. So I come down and I hit the offset menu and I'm in the offset page. Now you can see G54, my x-axis is highlighted. And if you think about it, right now I'm touching off on the left and right, which is my x-axis. Then what you want to do is you want to come down and you want to hit the button that says part zero set. And as long as you're highlighted on X, it's going to change the X axis. Now what you notice is it just changes to negative 8.065. What that's saying is the left side of my part is negative 8.065 from the machine home on the X axis. Now if you remember from using edge finders before, what I have to do is actually raise my edge finder up and then move it over 200 thousandths because I'm using a half inch edge finder. And we want to make sure the center of the tool is over the edge of the part. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to handle jog. I'm going to raise my Z axis positive direction so that it's off the part right there. And then I'm going to switch it back to X and I'm going to move over 250 thousandths, so half the diameter. Now I'm looking at the screen over here and I'm going to actually move it over and you're going to start to see some things happen. Now you see the work offset for G54, which is where I zeroed it out up here, 
is now saying zero. And so I'm gonna move my table so that the edge of my part goes towards the center of my tool. And in this case, I'm gonna move it until my work G54 says 0.250. So right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit part zero set again. And what we'll see is the G54 as long as I'm in the offset menu. If I go back to my X axis and I hit part zero set, my G54 down here goes to 0, 0.00. Now my zero is set and if we go and we take a look at the actual part right here, you can see that the edge of my part is now going straight up the center line of my tool, which is what I want. And now I need to do the same thing on my Y axis. So I'm gonna bring my cutter, my edge finder, I'm gonna bring it towards the back of the part and so with it still running, now I move my X and I move it so that I'll be somewhere in the middle of those edges. I move my Y so it's towards the back of the part. Now I go right off the back of the part and then I'm going to bring my Z down just enough to catch the edge of the actual part. Now I want to make sure I don't jam into the vise, but I want to make sure that I go down low enough so that I catch the edge of the part. So right there. And then I'm going to go back to my Y axis and I'm going to bring it back in. So I'll zoom in for you. You guys can start to see the offset. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring my Y axis so that the part goes towards the edge finder. I go until it just starts to offset. And if I zoom in, we should be able to see it jump. Right there, it jumped off. Now I come back and I do repeat the same procedure at the control, only now I'm going to be going with Y axis. So you'll see I'm still highlighted in work zero offset, but now I'm hi highlighted on the Y. I hit the same button, the part zero set right over here. And what that's going to do is it's going to zero out my G54 on Y right here. So if I hit part zero set, it zeroed out my G54 on Y. And then I have to raise up my Z axis so that it's off the part right over here. And then I want to crank over in the Y axis until my Y now says 0.250, and in this case it's going to be negative. One click at a time, or that's how I have my speed set at, so I'm at 240, 250. And then I just make sure my Y axis is re-highlighted right up here. And then I hit part zero set again. And I should see my Y go back to zero. And so now in theory, if I were to go and I were to position my G54 on X to zero, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna bring it right to zero. Right there. If I were to take a look at my part, the edge finder should be directly over the corner of my part in both X and Y, which if I look from the X direction, I can see that it splits right up the center of the tool. And if I look from the Y direction, you can also see that it splits right up the center of the tool. So in that case, I've just found my origin. And as long as you have set your program up to have all of the measurements from that top left corner, you should be good to go. So you've touched off your tools, you've set your origin, now you can just simulate and then run your program provided you have all the tooling set up correctly.